All right, so there's a scandal going on right now uh, about the Supreme Court, so I want to share this with you. Uh, Brian Tyler Cohen highlighted this here. Uh, the reporting is from Politico. Brett Kavanaugh was seen hanging out at a Republican party with Matt Gates, Sebastian Gorka, Sean Spicer, and Eric Prince. So uh, this is the piece of the Politico uh, segment on it, or Politico portion of the article. Spotted at Matt and Mercy Schlapps. <laughs> that, na that name always gets me, man. It, this guy's last name sounds like the sound it makes when you shit into a toilet. <laughs> Schlapp. Like, what are we talking about? Uh, their annual Christmas party at their Alexandria home on Friday night. Justice Brett Kavanaugh, Representative Matt Gates, and Ginger Gates. It's another name right there. Sean Spicer, Alex Acosta, Sebastian Gorka, um, Stephen and Katie Miller. Stephen Miller, uh, Trump insider. The massively anti-immigration weirdo who, like, spray paints his hair on. Uh, Katie Miller, Chad Wolf, Greta Van Susteren. Damn, I didn't even know she was still alive. Joan Cole, Laura Schlapp, and Bri Brian Wells, Brendan Carr. Uh, Representative-elect George Santos, uh, these other these other idiots, Eric Prince, um, Peter Davidson. I don't, I don't think that's Pete Davidson. He's probably out banging a supermodel or something. Eric Prince, for those of you who don't remember, was the head of Blackwater, a private mercenary army. So uh, he's a literal war criminal. That's what he is. Uh, they've been involved in killing civilians in Iraq. So this is Brett Kavanaugh was at this party. Brett Kavanaugh, Supreme Court Justice. Look, it raises a lot of questions about, like, well, what other relationships do you have with these far-right types? Because, and a lot of people don't know this, and they're amazed when, when they hear this, but the Supreme Court doesn't have a code of ethics. Other courts do. They don't. So, in other words, there can be a, a situation where they should clearly recuse themselves from the case. And they don't have to. So, like, with, uh, with Clarence Thomas' wife, who was involved in January 6th, and you know, try to stop the steal and all that shit. And she has direct connections with other people who were involved in it. So any case about that that gets to the Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas should recuse himself. And he wouldn't. He wouldn't do that. A lot of these people have spouses or they personally have investments. And then you get um, a case coming in front of them that might impact their own bank account and they don't recuse themselves. And they snuggle up with these, you know right-wing groups and right-wing figures, literal Trump administration officials, you know, rubbing elbows with them, drinking together, having fun. And then they have the nerve, they have the gall to turn around and say, oh, we're not, we're not political. What? How many times have you heard that about the Supreme Court? No, no, no. We're, see, we're above politics. What we do is we just read the Constitution, take the law, and apply it as is, the way it was intended by the founders. This is what they say. Don't ever, ever, ever believe their bullshit. Courts, by their very nature, are political. Because you're going to have different interpretations of the law, of the words that are on the paper. And you have people who have conservative interpretations, so they are politically conservative, and you have people who have a more liberal or left interpretation. They're political as well, just in the other direction. But the right loves to do this, activist judges. These are left-wing activist judges. Like, you're an activist judge, Brett Kavanaugh. The right-wingers are activist judges. It was an activist judge move to overturn decades of precedent when you threw out Roe versus Wade. That's being an activist. So now you see, this, they're snug, he's snuggling up with... First of all, genuinely insane people. Second of all, hardcore right-wingers. And so, this is now, you know, renewing the conversation. They need to have a code of ethics. They need to have a code of ethics. They can't. I mean, this is, what are we going to do next? Are we going to have, you know, all the conservative justices uh, at the Fox News Christmas party with fucking Rupert Murdoch? I mean, they don't even have, like, they don't even have the veneer anymore of seriousness, impartiality, neutrality, objectivity. They're just letting their freak flag fly. Like, yeah, we're right-wing hacks. I hang out with right-wing hacks. You know, I was just at a party with a guy who's uh, pushed hardcore to build Trump's wall and super anti-immigrant and the fucking Matt Gates, that goofball, and the war criminal. Like, okay, so now what happens if, if a case comes in front of Brett Kavanaugh about Blackwater or about a private mercenary army? What happens? What's going to happen? He's not going to recuse himself, and he's going to rule with them. And then, by the way, you wonder how we get these decisions, right? 
uh, one of the cases they're hearing now is about Andrew Cuomo's aide who took money and then delivered for some company. Um, and he was basically found guilty of corruption in New York. And then now they're hearing that case. And it looks like based on their questioning, they're going to overturn this conviction. And um, their argument is effectively, well, look, he took the money when he wasn't even working as Andrew Cuomo's aide. He was technically not in that role at the time. And so it's not a, it's not a bribe. It's not corruption because he wasn't even working in an official capacity of the government at the time. So they're basically saying, like, the only way to get somebody on corruption is a literal quid pro quo where you have them, like, on video saying, I will give you money and you will do me this favor, right? Let's do corruption and bribery. That's, like, that's the precedent that we're laying here. That That's that's what they're going to make make it. And you wonder, well, how did they come to a position like that? It's because they're all surrounded by assholes like this. And on the Democratic side, it's not, you know, in corporate Democrat circles, they all think corruption is fine, too. They all think bribery is fine, too. They swim in money that corporations have given them, too. And so think about that, man. So it's the environment that you, they, that you put them in, and they act in accordance with that environment. They're all corporate elitists. And so, look at how terrible this problem is. We don't have, like, serious academics, judicial experts, intelligent policy types on the court. Certainly the right-wing the right -wing ones, are, and they're the worst of the worst, are hanging out with assholes like this. And they think, no, this doesn't impact my impartiality at all. Like, I'm, I'm totally above the fray. Oh, are you really? Are you really? Again, look at the names on this list. So... Don't ever let them tell you, oh, we're apolitical. Oh, we just we just read the Constitution and interpret it as is. No, any decision from a court by definition is political. The question is, what are your politics? Where is your bias? How are you interpreting the law? And we know what lens and what filter a guy like Kavanaugh uses. And this makes it very, very, very clear for us. And these are the people, by the way, who are basically given, you know, given veto power on literally anything that gets through Congress and, and the president signs. Think about that. This is judicial tyranny. They are judicial authoritarians. They've allowed themselves to, to veto the will of the people under the guise of, oh, we're just doing judicial review. No, you're not. You're overreaching. And if they do what we looks like they're going to do in the Supreme Court case on, um, on student loan debt reduction, oh boy. It's time to take them on. Head on. And uh, Article 3, Section 2, Clause 2 is about something called court stripping, which is like Congress stepping up and saying, no, you're not allowed to rule on these, these things. We've declared it. Because Congress has that authority. They just haven't used it. But they have that authority of we're limiting the scope of what the Supreme Court can even rule on. So they could pass something and say, the Supreme Court's not allowed to rule on this. They need to start doing that. Because this is not an objective group of people. This is not a fair group of people. This is not a group of people who's, oh, I'm just just following the law, bro. No, you're not. You're, in, you're taking your own politics and forcing them on the entire country with your rigid, idiotic interpretation of the Constitution. Anyway, here's who this guy is hanging out with. I think that says a lot. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.